It's Femi Oyeniran and we are at the launch of the evolution of Black British Music, which is a show that I directed and exec produced. Hey BET, my name is Nikki Stimpton Walker. I'm one of the directors of the evolution of Black British Music. And we're here today at the launch. Amazing night, amazing feeling, amazing people, amazing show. The first take that I've bought of a UK artist wasn't even necessarily one that I bought. It was that I taped it off radio. This, I'm showing my age now. I actually taped most of my UK music off radio. I didn't actually buy it. And then thereafter, you know, sort of buy the Dizzy Rascal, the, you know, your typical, like, so solid, I remember. I used to sell CDs in school. This is how much I love music. Like, I used to bootleg. <laughs> I shouldn't even be saying this. Um, it was soul to soul. They were like amazing group, a UK group. We've done amazing things. You know, I think it's more fire crew, you know? I think it's more fire. I think it was um, back then. It would have started from the jungle days. I would say like Skibbity, Shabba, um, Bassman, all them man with like Shia Fetz, Ray Keith. I was brought up in Essex, Colchester, and the first tune I ever bought, forget about CD, forget about tape, it was seven inch, and it was by the police, and it was a tune called Message in the Bottle. More Fire Crew Oi, I love that tune, I was such a Channel U head coming up. Oi, More Fire Crew, and I remember I had the tape and the CD. CDs are little discs that we used to have back in the day before streaming. Misha Paris. I think it's called Give a Little Little Shoulda Known Better. Tune is fire. Gigs Walk in the Park. Yeah, I think it might have been Gigs Walk in the Park. Before that, we wasn't really into it. So yeah, Gigs Walk in the Park. This is UK Grime Volume 1. But that was the first time that I put a double CD together with everybody in the scene, where that was in HMP. So this is UK Grime Volume 1, where you can see Skepta, Dizzy, Stormzy. It was the first time niggas was in a commercial store. This is UK Grime. The song that made me fall in love with Black British music wasn't necessarily a song, it was like instrumentals. So a lot of the instrumentals that were coming out of East London, so a lot of the like Wiley instrumentals. My favorite UK song at the time that made me think, oh my God, UK is sick, was Wiley Eskimo V. When I heard the Eskimo rhythm, I was like, nah. Um, Dizzy Rascal made beats that I liked. Um, Jamma made some sick instrumentals. Smiley Culture, Police Officer. There's so many. One of them was Gineo Party Hard. I love that song. I think it's a classic no matter where you're at. Uh, a house party, a club, a funeral, a christening. When Party Hard comes on by Gineo, Everyone gets up and they party hard. No we from Pays Go crew. It, you know what? It, it, I just have, used to have such pride when that came on, especially when you're outside your area and it comes on and you're in South London and your East London representatives come on. You just, you're going, you're going mad. The iconic Kelly LaRock. Some of you might not know this, but Kelly was an R&B artist before she got into Garage. And the track was called My Love, the original R&B. Fire, big up Kels. The song that made me fall in love with Black British music was Kenny LaRock, My Love. I love that song. And there was two versions. There was the faster version and there was a the slower version. And I loved the slower version so much. And what was so lit is that you could go and get both versions on a CD. I guess the jazz funk dates, loose ends, you know, like soul funk came along in the, in the late 80s. It was our version of R&B. And those independent artists like loose ends um, slow down. I mean, that was a banger, without a doubt. Gigs talking the hardest. The coldest, and it's our national anthem. So that was it. It has to be Do You Might. Because um, as a label, publisher, and writer, 
That record's then gone number one with Drake. It's been used by RD. It's still relevant now. That's been my biggest blessing. So, do you mind if I... Producing the evolution of Black British music has been one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my career in terms of we've had to like engage with so much talent like sort of on and off camera. Trying to get all the artists together, their dates, their schedules, some of them was on tour, some of them caught Covid, some of them was away. It was very difficult to get so many great talent in one room but was able to get over 80 artists and DJs, producers who contributed to Black British music. And the ones who are not in it, don't feel disrespected. We still want to reach out to you. Hopefully they, they may be a part two. But we, we couldn't tell the story without including all the people that we included. And so I hope that people feel like we did their story right. Obviously there's people that we missed out, but it was a special show in terms of getting the right music, getting the right talent, assembling the right team to make it happen. But it was a top show to make, but it's probably the most important thing I've ever made. But um, overall, the experience was amazing. BET, thank you so much. Without you, it wasn't possible. We got Cecilia. Without you believing in this dream and, and the vision of this show, there's nothing like this on TV, so it's important for the culture. 30, 40, 100 years from now, people will look back to this and they will see what a great mark the UK has made in British black music and around the world. So this show is very, very important, not just for me, but for the future and for black music that continues to grow and continues to dominate the world.